Hey, how's it going, dude? It's all first. So I'm gonna show you how you can start your car using nothing but a paper clip. And no, this is not a hoax. Here, I'll even get you guys a shot at this angle so you know there's no one in the car. <laughs> Alright, so for the first half of this video, I'll quickly show you how you can do this so you can go out there and impress your friends. And for the second half, we'll go full nerd on the whiteboard and I'll show you how you can use this information to help you diagnose starting issues. And this is the most important step here. If you have an automatic transmission, make sure your transmission is in park and your emergency parking brakes are applied. And if you have a manual transmission, that your car is in neutral. And again, your emergency parking brakes are applied as well. Because if your car is in gear when you do this, you could potentially run yourself over, run someone else over, uh, drive your car off a ditch, or hit someone else's car and cause all sorts of problems. Step number one, find your fuse and relay box inside your engine bay. Step number two, remove fuse cover and find your starter relay. And if you're lucky, you'll have a little diagram inside your fuse cover that'll tell you what relay is for what. As you can see, this diagram is telling you our starter relay is right here, which makes it this one on this panel. So go ahead and remove that next. All right, so after you remove your relay, you're gonna have either a four or five pin relay. And what you want to do is to find this little diagram that should be on the side that will tell you which two pins are for the control side and which ones are for the load or the switch side. As you can see on this one, we got 85 and 86 for our control side and 87 and 30 are going to be for our load or switch side. And right now we're only concerned for the pins for the switch side, so we're going to find number 30 and 87 pins on this relay. Now hopefully you guys can see this, but this is number 30 on the bottom and this is number 87 up top. Next, you want to find the corresponding terminals for these two pins. So this is 30, it's going to be that. It's 87, it's going to be this guy. All right, it's very important that you follow the next few steps very closely. But not only that, you understand the concepts behind it. Because if you do this wrong, you could damage something on your car. And I, Righteous and Wrenches, will not be held responsible for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is for entertainment purposes only. Next, you want to grab yourself a test light. Attach this end to battery ground. And then with the other end of our test light, we're gonna probe these two terminals here and make sure we only have power going to one of them. Here's number 30, nothing. And here's number 87. There, our test light lights up, telling us we have battery voltage here. Now, if you have a five pin relay, things are usually gonna be just slightly different. As you can see on this diagram, your controls pins are gonna be the same. The switch side, you're gonna have an extra pin that's 87A, but 30 and 87 are the terminals again you wanna look for. Usually. Next, you want to get in your car, put the key in the ignition, and turn it to the on position. And for those of you that are screaming cheater at the screen right now, you don't need the key to do this. I'll explain later. Next, you grab your paper clip, open it up like this. Next, all we have to do is to jump terminal 30 to 87. That should engage our starter, turn our engine, and start our engine as well. Now, I have to mention that this is not going to work on cars that have a chip or a safe pass code stored in the key, but it should work on any car with this older style starting system. Once again, just make sure it is terminals 30 and 87 on your car. It's not always the same for each car. And then you remove this after your engine starts, okay? Works every time. And of course, you don't have to use paper clips. Anything that can conduct electricity will do like these small picks or even screwdrivers. All right, so that was fun. But next, let me draw a little electrical diagram on the whiteboard, show you why you don't actually need a key to do this and also how you can use this to help you diagnose starting issues. All right, so here's a diagram of a basic starting system and we're gonna start at the ignition switch so I can explain to you why you don't necessarily need the key to do what we just did. All right, so when you get in your car and turn the key to the on position, you're gonna send voltage through your ignition switch, which is in the back of your ignition cylinder assembly, back here, to all your different control modules that are necessary to be powered in order for your engine to run and your car to operate, like your PCM, BCM, and TCM. All right, next after you power up all your different modules, all that's left is a crank signal from your crankshaft position sensor in order for your power control module to start firing the fuel injectors and get your engine going. Now, you don't, you're not gonna have a crank signal if your engine is not spinning, and that's where the, your starter comes in. So when we turn the key to the start position, we're not only sending voltage to all our different PCMs, but also through this wire that comes our ignition switch. From here, if you have an automatic, voltage is gonna go to your neutral safety switch, or if you have a manual transmission, 
is going to go to your clutch pedal position sensor. And the job of these guys is basically for safety. Your neutral safety switch will only let voltage pass if your transmission is in park or neutral. And your clutch pedal position sensor will only let voltage pass if you're depressing the clutch. This way your car can't jolt forward or, or back and hurt you, your car, or someone else. All right, from there, this will go to your starter relay, which is in our relay box, as we saw. And this is gonna to go to the control side of our starter relay. This is the side we did not bother with. We were only messing around with the switch side or the load side. And this is gonna be the power wire to your starter relay for the control side. And the ground side is grounded uh, through your chassis usually. So once again, when you put your key to the on position and then start, you're powering all your control modules and then you're sending voltage through this wire, through your clutch pedal position sensor or your neutral safety switch to the control side of your uh, starter relay and activating this relay. Once this is activated, the coil for the control side will pull on the switch side and since this is normally open, it will close this, allowing for current to flow from your battery through this starter trigger wire through your starter relay down to your starter. And since your starter receives constant voltage from your battery at all times and is grounded through your engine, start spinning, spinning your fly flywheel, which in turn turns your crankshaft, turns your engine over, produces a crank signal. And since these uh, control modules are already powered, your car starts and gets going. So basically what we're doing here is when we turn the key to the on position, we get power to all our different control modules, then we bypass this side entirely and we jump these two terminals in our uh, relay, start our starter, and since our control modules are already powered, we, they get a crank signal and they start the car. Now as far as how you can do this without the key, well basically you get to your, you open up your dash, you get to your ignition switch and find the wires that go to your different uh, control modules, supply power to them, then you do this and that starts your car. But obviously if you're down there, you might as well just uh, supply power to this starter wire as well and you can get it started from there. That's if everything from here to this control circuit on your relay works correctly. And that's when this comes in handy when you're trying to diagnose a no crank, no start or an intermittent no crank, no start issue on your car. See, when you're jumping this two pins here, you're basically, if your engine starts and cranks, or even doesn't start, just cranks, basically you are verified that your battery is good, your battery terminals are good, power is going through this uh, cable to your starter, your starter is good, your starter has ground, and also these, uh, this trigger wire from your battery to this pin, and then from uh, this pin, the starter trigger wire, all the way down to your starter is good as well. So your issue must be on this side, or the relay itself, don't forget that. All right, so if you jump these two and your engine cranks, then you have, that's not your problem, and this, problem is on the other side. Now here's how you can use a test light to diagnose which side of the control side your problem lies on. So next go ahead and uh, attach your test light to your battery positive and then we're going to probe these two remaining pins and one of them should have ground there so that so this one is our ground and this one should be where 12 volts come from our ignition switch. So we'll switch our test light to ground. We'll have our test light attached here. This should work. So next I'm going to turn the key to the crank or start position and then this test light should light up. There we go. And again, just to clarify, our test light was here and when we turned the key to the start position, voltage was able to get through all this, uh, this fuse, these wires, these sensors to here and light up our test light. So we verified that everything on this circuit is fine. And if everything checks out, the only thing that remains is the relay. Now you can swap this if you want with a known good one to see whether that solves your problem. Or you can test this relay using a multimeter. And I've done a video on how you can test relays and I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen along with some other related videos. And in that video, I show you how you can exactly test these and it doesn't matter if it has the little diagram on the side or not. All right, with that said, gonna wrap this up. Remember folks, if you have automotive question, you have 36 hours after I post every new video to post your question below and I'll uh, try to answer them as soon as I can. Now, if you're coming across this video in the future, if you have a question, it's not a problem. All you have to do is to subscribe, wait for my next video to pop up in your subscription feed, click on it, watch it, post your question, and I'll answer it. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.